Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is April and if you're new here, I make DIY fashion and sewing tutorials every week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on a new video. I thought I would kick off 2020 with teaching you guys how to draft your own patterns by tracing clothes you own at home already. This has been highly requested for many years now and I'm finally making this video for you guys. So I hope you guys learned something new that is going to help at advance your fashion designing skills and let's get started. So first let's talk about the materials and supplies that you're going to need to start pattern making. You'll need a large roll of paper. I use this alphanumerical dotted paper that I found on Amazon and I will link it below if you guys are interested. This is what I used in college but before I even bought this gigantic roll, I just used gift wrap paper that I bought from the dollar store or just anywhere really inexpensive. So I think this alphanumerical paper is used for pattern making because it's a little bit more transparent so you can see what's underneath if you're tracing something and it allows you to trace things out more accurately. You'll need a tracing wheel. Any tracing wheel is fine. You don't have to get my exact one, but they have spikes along the wheel which will create tiny dents into the paper while you're tracing it, which will make it easy for you to see and mark afterwards. You'll need some paper cutting scissors and rulers. It's helpful if they're clear so you can see the paper through them. I have my straight ruler, my French curve which is great for necklines and armholes, and my hip curve. If you only have the straight ruler, that's fine as well. Sometimes I don't even use my other rulers because I forget about them, but they do speed up the process and are very handy for tracing curves. You'll also need some marking utensils. You can use pens or pencils or markers. I use Sharpies in my videos because so you guys can see it a lot clearer on camera. But I recommend using a pencil in case you mess up then you can just erase it and draw a new line. You'll also need some magic tape and you want to use this kind of tape because it's very easy to peel off paper. And in pattern making, we will be taping and untaping our patterns all day long. And lastly, grab whatever clothes that you want to trace today. I normally like to trace pants or shorts. For this video, I'm just going to show you guys how to trace basic things, but the same rules apply when tracing other things as well. The first thing I'm going to do is trace a pair of high-waisted shorts. I fold my shorts in half and cut a piece of paper that will be big enough to trace it and also add seam allowance. Fold the front side of the shorts in half and try to lay all the seams as flat as possible. I normally focus on the crotch seam laying flat because the side seam usually overlaps. I drew a straight line down my paper for the grain line and will line it up with the grain line of my clothes. To find the grain line on my clothes, I just look for the vertical threads going down the shorts and line that up with the straight line I drew on my paper. This way we know our pattern is on grain. You can use weights to hold your clothes in place so it doesn't move or you can just hold it down like me. Using my tracing wheel, I first mark the inner leg and crotch seam. Notice how I'm marking exactly where the seam line is and not where the edge of the shorts are. The same thing applies to the side seams of the shorts. The back side overlaps to the front, but I will only be marking exactly where the seam line is and not the edge of the shorts. To mark through all the layers, you could either push down with your tracing wheel to create a dent, or I just place my finger on the seam line and lift up the shorts to mark underneath up to where my finger is placed. Remember, this does not have to be perfect. Just as long as you get a similar shape down, you should be good. Because after this, you still need to create a sample and make more alterations. Now that your tracing wheel created a guideline to follow, you can grab your rulers and markers and trace over those holes. For the corners, I usually like to create a 90 degree angle so when the seams connect, it's straight and it's not at an angle. Sometimes your pattern won't need it to be a perfect corner and that's okay as well. Like I said, we will be creating samples to test out our pattern anyways, so it's not a big deal. 
It's okay if you need to switch back and forth between using your straight ruler and your French curve. Or if you just want to use your straight ruler to mark out everything. I like to mark the corners first before connecting the lines. For the side seams of the shorts, the hip curve ruler is perfect to use. Sometimes the rulers aren't going to line up perfectly with your markings, which is fine. All you have to do is move it over slightly and make it work. The hip curve is also great for marking your waistline. Once the front shorts is marked out, I can go ahead and add my seam allowance all around the edges. I normally use a half inch seam allowance on all my projects and at the hem, I'll make it a little longer. For the back side of the shorts, it's pretty much the same. It does get tricky though at the crotch seam and inner leg seam because the back crotch folds under to the front side of the shorts. What I like to do is focus on the side seam and center back seam laying flat and mark those first with my tracing wheel. Then I can pull out the inner leg and the rest of the crotch seam out and reline it up with the curve I already marked out and continue tracing it. To make sure my side seams and inner leg seams are the same length, I just lay the front pattern piece on top and transfer the marking. Notice how I'm lining up the pattern piece on the seam line and not including the side seam. That's because we haven't added our seam allowance to the back shorts yet. If you're adding a zipper, you can go ahead and place a marking for it on your pattern as well. For the waistband of the shorts, at first it looks curved, but if you pay attention to the details, the waistband is one long straight piece. So all I have to do is measure how long and wide it is, mark it on paper, and add my seam allowance. The pattern piece for this is going to look like one long straight strip. We actually don't need to use tape that much yet until we start altering the pieces, but if I need a little more space on my paper, I'll tape some scrap paper underneath so I have more to work with. It's helpful to label how many pieces you need to cut on your patterns. You can put cut two or cut on fold or cut one lining and one interfacing. It all depends on what your design calls for. And there you have it, front shorts, back shorts, and the waistband. The next item I'm going to show you how to trace is a t-shirt. Once again, fold your item in half and always make sure the seams of the clothes is laying flat so you can accurately trace it. Since this will be cut on fold, I draw a straight line for the center front. A yardstick would be really useful for doing this so your line doesn't move. Match up the center front of the shirt with the line and then trace the body of the shirt only. T-shirts are mainly straight lines so it's really simple to trace. Once I get to the bottom of the armhole, I create a 90 degree angle and then can either trace it from underneath or press my wheel along the seam line on top. T-shirt material is thin so you should be able to see the dents underneath. Then trace the shoulder seam and front neckline. The process just repeats, mark along the dotted lines and add your seam allowance.
Next, the t-shirt sleeve is pretty simple. Draw a center line down your paper and lay your sleeve down so that the folded side of the sleeve is lined up with the center line. Then trace the sleeve with your wheel and use the pressing method to trace along the curve. If you're scared of damaging your clothes by doing this, you can do what I did earlier and place one finger on top and lift the sleeve up to follow where your finger is. Here I'm just straightening out the bottom of my sleeves so that it hits at a 90 degree angle which will make it easier for hemming the raw edges later. Since both sides of the t-shirt sleeve is the same, I fold my paper in half and cut both sides out together. But for other sleeves, you will have to trace the front and back separately, which I will show you in a little bit. Next, I'm going to demonstrate tracing parts of a jacket. To trace a hoodie, keep it folded in half, and I'm paying attention to where the grain line is again so I can position it on my paper. Then trace out the entire hoodie with your wheel. Get as close to the edges as you can. And I pressed the wheel along the neckline instead of rolling it, but it didn't show up. So I just lift up the jacket and follow the neckline as accurately as possible. Mark your lines, add your seam allowance and cut it out. I copy the same seam allowance my hoodie has, which is one and a quarter inch along the front. For the drawstring. You can also place a marking for where to place the hole for the string to come out of as well. And next, here's how you would trace the sleeves of this hoodie. It's a different shape from the other one and we will have to trace both sides separately. Draw your center fold line, line up the front half of the sleeve along the line, and then trace it out. Follow the shape of the armhole and then at the top, the sleeve connects to the neckline so you'll have to trace it along the neckline as well. Next, flip the sleeve over to the back side, line up the top neckline markings, and then trace out the back side of the sleeve. I needed a little more paper at the top to complete my pattern, so I just grabbed a scrap piece and taped it underneath. Label which sleeve is the front and back, and you could also place notches along the armhole for when you cut it out. I put one notch for the back and two notches for the front. And there you have it, your jacket sleeve. Lastly, I'm going to demonstrate how I would trace the crossover top on this romper that has an elastic waist. Since the waist is scrunched from the elastic, you want to ask someone to help you stretch it out and hold it in place so that you can trace it as one flat piece. Then the rest is simple. I just trace one side of the crossover bodice along the center, the shoulder, the waist, and the armhole. Add your seam allowance, cut it out, and you now have a crossover bodice pattern to play around with. As you can see, the same things apply to different items of clothing for the most part. You could even place the paper on top if that's easier for you. That's what I did to trace out the pants pocket bag for the Instagram design suit set. Stay tuned for the next part where I will show you guys how to create your sample and chew up your markings. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to trace your own clothes and turn it into a pattern piece. Let me know down in the comments what videos you want to see this year in 2020. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!